Ohio Governor Mike DeWine has sided with child groomers and mutilators over a bill. Why? Who knows, but his rationale was pretty weak. A couple in Michigan is suing a school after it was discovered that the school had been socially transitioning their daughter without their knowledge. And sadly, there was another school shooting, this time in Iowa. And I'm going to be talking about a few known details about that incident. So, let's not waste time, because kids need saving and protecting. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Ohio's legislators sent House Bill 68 to Governor Mike DeWine. The bill is titled Saving Adolescents from Experimentation, or SAFE Act. And the lead sponsor of it was Rep Representative Gary Click. Passing this bill would protect girls from having to compete against boys in school sports. It would also stop all new gender transition care, aka child mutilation. You know, the things such as uh, cross sex hormones and uh, unnecessary surgeries. The bill also permits physician professional licensing boards to discipline doctors who break the law. And it mentions that the Attorney General can enforce the compliance of the bill. Governor DeWine vetoed this bill. And it, it makes me wonder, why would a pro-lockdown and pro-clot shot DeWine make such a disastrous choice for kids? Could it be that maybe he's not as much as a as much of a Christian conservative as he claims to be? Or maybe he's just not using his noggin. Who knows? Governor DeWine did state the following. Were House Bill 68 to become law, Ohio would be saying that the state, the government, knows better what is medically best for a child than the two people who love that child the most, the parents. <clears throat> A few counterpoints to you, dear Governor DeWine. Number one, if it's a matter of just letting the parents do anything they want with their children, then why do we still have laws against child molestation or child trafficking? Should it be up to the two people who love the child the most to do these th things to their kids? Or does the government get to step in and prevent the abuse? We know exactly how you would answer these questions, Governor DeWine. Number two, we know good and well that the government couldn't care less about the consent of parents when the government schools want to confuse kids by transing them behind the parents' backs. And uh, number three, parents are not the ones who love their children the most. God Almighty loves all of humanity more than any other human can. As a self-avowed Christian, Governor DeWine should know that signing godly laws that protect children from gender confusion is not optional. Another reason that the governor gave for refusing to sign the bill was that uh, some adult trans people claimed to him that they, had, they would have taken their own life had it not been for gender-affirming care, which, as I've talked about before, that's a form of, form of emotional blackmail. Do as I say, do what I want, or I'm going to kill myself. That, that, that's ridiculous. That's manipulation. Abusers use that to keep victims in abusive relationships. Thankfully, when the bill returned back to the Ohio House, they overrode DeWine's veto in a 65 to 28 vote. And last I heard, it goes back to the Senate and it's going to need a third-fifths vote to pass. Let's pray that they get it done. Now, moving on to the state of Michigan. Another lawsuit against a public school. Woo! Keep them coming, folks. According to Alliance Defending Freedom, it states in an article, ADF attorneys sue Rockford Public School District or referring to middle school girl by a masculine name, male pronouns, while concealing actions from parents. So this article is from mid-December. I think it was December 18th that it was published. And it says, 
excuse me, Dan and Jennifer Mead withdrew their daughter from the eighth grade at East Rock Middle School in October 2022 after district employees acting in compliance with Rockford Public School District policy treated their daughter as a boy by referring to her by a masculine name and male pronouns without notifying the Meads or seeking their consent. Employees had altered the girls' official records to remove references to the district's actions before sending the records home. The Meads only discovered the district's actions when an employee unintentionally failed to completely alter a report about their daughter before sharing it with them. By concealing this important information, the district violated the Meads' fundamental, fundamental parent, parental rights. The U.S. Constitution protects their right as parents to make decisions about the upbringing, education, and health care of their children. Amen to that wording. So here, as you can see, the government hypocrisy is easy to point out. You have Ohio Governor DeWine saying that parents should make the decisions for their kids regarding trans care, while the government school in Michigan, Ohio's neighbors, uh, was intentionally excluding parents from those very same decisions regarding the same subject. Notice how, no matter what, these liberal politicians always lean into whichever direction it takes to gay or trans the kids. They're going by what the LGBTQETC activists are pushing and not by what is legitimately best for the children. Now you may hear a politician using a talking point like this. According to medical experts, if we affirm these LGBTQ youths, they live fulfilling lives. We're just following the science. Yes, well, the majority of experts were fine with lobotomies less than 100 years ago. And let's remind folks that researchers are historically human subjects. In unethical ways, mind you. The Tuskegee syphilis study, for example. So, you can't just make an appeal to authority and think that that settles the matter. You have to be willing to, dis to question these so-called experts. Okay, the last subject for this episode is the grimmest. This latest school shooting in Iowa happened at Perry High School. This happened on January 4th. On the day of the shooting, multiple people online noted details about the shooter on different social media accounts, allegedly belonging to the shooter. The shooter's name was Dylan Butler, and an article by Town Hall states, an emoji of the gay pride flag was featured on the TikTok page's bio, and an image of an anime girl was selected as the profile's avatar. In another TikTok video, the account used the hashtag genderfluid. <clears throat> Using an identical profile picture in, on Instagram, user at DylanSayWhat212 identified as a trans non-binary with he-they pronouns. However, the account has since been scrubbed. After hearing the news of this shooting, if anybody doubted that those accounts belonged to the shooter, the very fact that they disappeared once people started discussing them online, that's a little sus, right? It almost confirms what people were suspecting. It seems pretty clear, though, that yet another mass shooting was perpetrated by a trans person. What are we up to now? Five as of late? For being such a small fraction of the U.S. population, the number of them becoming violent should tell us something. Maybe, just maybe, they are mentally unwell and pretending they aren't is bad for society. Let me close by showing support for the families of the two victims whose lives were stolen by this shooter, and also to the injured. I looked online, and I don't know if there are any uh, websites that name the victims who were injured, but there were four victims that were injured that survived. But let me officially offer my sincere condolences to the family of Dan Marburger, the principal of that school, and to the family of Amir Jalif. My heart goes out to you. I will be praying. And I intend to do a little more than that, at least 
for one or both. To my audience, I'm including the links to GoFundMes that were created for the families of the two that were slain. Please, prayerfully consider donating. And with that, I close. Remember folks, be bold as lions.